our Prince of Peace, we thank you. The Great Shepherd, we thank you. The Rock of Ages, we thank you. The Everlasting Father, we thank you. The owner of this day and maker of this day, we thank you. The owner of our lives, we thank you. The one who fights our battles, we thank you. The God who woke us up this day and gave us life and life more abundantly, we thank you. Our healer, our provider, our way maker, our defender, our rock, our strength, our peace, our joy, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for today's prayer. We commit it unto your able hand. Holy Spirit, help us guide the prayer, lead the prayer, enable the prayer, empower the prayer in the name of Jesus. Our great comforter, the one who comforts those who are weary, we call upon you today. Take over today's prayer, my Lord. We cover this prayer, our minds, our spirit, our soul, every prayer point, every person joining in on Facebook and on the prayer line. We cover our mind in the blood of Jesus. We cover our spirits. We cover the airway in the blood of Jesus. We ask the Holy Spirit to have its way today in the name of Jesus. Let us now pray selfish prayer. Let us pray according to your perfect will. Enable us in Jesus' name. Amen. I welcome all of you that are joining. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. God is good. I thank the Lord for today's prayer and I'm excited about what God is going to do today and I thank him. I thank him for moving by his spirit. I want us to say the Lord's prayer before we begin today's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen 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 in jesus name glory be to god hallelujah our god is good he's fantastic and he's a great god and i welcome all of you i'm excited about today's prayer i believe god to use this prayer today to bless us to really move in our lives so do me a favor begin to share as you are joining begin to share the topic i feel like the lord gave me for us today is expect god to do the unexpected Expect God in your life to do the unusual, to do the supernatural, to do the miraculous. Because the Bible says, if we expect, there will be a manifestation. So we are praying today that we will expect the God who is admirable, he's accessible, he's approachable, he's available. Our God is amazing, he's marvelous, he's perfect. Our God is brilliant. He's a spectacular God. He's fantastic, he's excellent, he's personable, and he loves us. Amen? So the topic today is expect God to do the unexpected. My name is Pat Akindude, and I thank all of you for joining. And I pray today that God will use this prayer to touch your lives in a supernatural way, in the ways that you believe in him to move in your life, to do something so different that the whole world will know nobody could have done this but him. Amen? So when life fails to meet our expectation, expect God to do the unexpected. We encounter so many times things happen in our lives and it's like, God, God, where are you? Some of us are so broken. Sometimes it's like, what? What's going on, God? And as I was just thinking about the, today's prayer, I thought about the disciples when Jesus told them, let's go to the other side. The other side means another level another place, a higher ground. Let's go to the other side. So they all got in the boat in Mark 4. As they got in the boat, the boat started, it's like suddenly, I want to actually read it to you. So as we read this story, you can sometimes relate it to what's going on in your personal life. It says, I want to start from Mark 4 verse 37. It says, and a great storm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling up with water. But he was 
in the stern asleep on the pillow. This is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus was asleep, but his disciples were awake. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he rose up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. There was a great calm. Nobody can produce a great calm like God. These disciples were in the boat. They were going on the other side where God, God was going to use them, where there was going to be a miracle, where the man possessed with legions of demons was going to be delivered, where the woman with the issue of blood was going to be healed, where the 12-year-old daughter was going to uh, come back to life that had died. All this miracle was ordained to happen on the other side. Destiny, purpose, greatness, lives being changed. But in the meantime, they were in the boat. The boat was like it was about to drown them because the water, great storm came and the water was pouring into the boat. It was hitting them that it looked like every one of them were going to perish. Jesus was in the boat, but he was downstairs sleeping. Resting in peace. And the disciples out of panic, they went to call him. There are times in our lives where trouble is coming on every side. Your heart is broken. There is attack against your finances. There is attack against your job. There is attack against your marriage. There is trouble with your children. It's like on every side, what can go wrong is going wrong. And you're going, God, where are you? I'm not hearing you. You're not saying anything. You're not doing anything. You're not moving, God. Where are you? He's asleep. But in the meantime, he was in the boat. So even though he was asleep, he was in the boat. So I want to remind you, every challenge, every difficulty, every struggle you're going through, God knows. He's right there. And at the right time, he will get up. You just need to call him. So today, I want you to lift up your voice and say, Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my situation, both in my good times and in my bad times. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your presence. I need your direction. I need your enablement. I need your power. Lord, I need you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Stephanie, just call out to him. My dear Laura, Laura Easters, my beautiful one. Just say, I need you. Sharif, tell God you need him. Everyone, when you call out to him, he's in the boat. He will respond. And that storm that looks like it's about to kill you, that look like, I don't know if I can take this one more day. I don't know if this boat can continue like this. Megan, it will. It will. You are coming out and you will make it to the other side. The reason the enemy is threatening your life, threatening your joy, threatening your peace is because you are going to the other side. And in the other side, there's purpose. In the other side, there's destiny. In the other side is the move of God where God can exceed and wants to exceed your expectation. Where God wants to do above everything you can ever think possible. God wants to do with Maria. So all of you on the prayer line, I want you to begin to expect God to do the unexpected. So when Jesus woke up, I love what he did. The Bible said, and he rose up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. I want you to hear Jesus telling your storm, peace, be still. Yes, please, my dear Laura, all of you that are joining, do share. Peace, be still. So I speak in the authority that is in the name of Yeshua, Amashiach, to the storm in your lives. Peace, be still. Physical storm, mental storm. Marital storm, financial storm, emotional storm, 
Peace be still in the name of Jesus. Be still. Every storm raging around you, be still. You move into your place of purpose. You will not be stopped by the storm. You will not be hindered by the storm. This storm will only stretch your faith. You know what this storm did to the disciples? It opened their spiritual eyes. Listen to what they said. Jesus said to them, why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. Who can this be? This man that we've been around, he has such power. He has such ability. Who can this be? Who can do the impossible? They realized he was Yeshua, Amashiach. He was the miracle worker. He was the capable God. He was the dependable God. He was the God that cannot fail. He is the answer to their situation. He is the answer and the solution to their problem. He is. Who can stop the storm in your life? I don't know what storm you are in. For some of us, it's different storms. Some you are just going into the storm. Some you are right in the middle of the storm. Some you are about to come out. Some you are already out. I pray today God will move speedily and bring each and every person out of the storm that is trying to keep you from purpose and destiny. That is trying to keep you from that which God has created you to do and to be. The storm that wants to hinder you. I pray today God will bring an end to it. In the name of Jesus. Nobody can stop what God wants to do through you. No storm. It may delay it. It may hinder it. But when God allows it to happen, it's because he wants to make you strong. He wants to increase your faith. He wants to give you capacity to resist that storm, to no longer be threatened by the storm. So I pray today, every fear that you are encountering, may God turn those fear into faith, into faith, into faith in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God plan, God's plan can exceed your expectation. In this season, be inspired to take a leap of faith and overcome what God is doing in your life in the name of Jesus. I love what Jesus said through Solomon. He said to Solomon, 2 Chronicle chapter 1 verse 7, what did that scripture say? He said, he said, Solomon, Solomon, listen to this. Tell me, what do you want? What did Solomon ask God for? He asked God, Solomon, he asked God, what do you want me to do for you? Solomon was not really looking to God to do the impossible, the unexpected, the unbelievable. He just gave generously to God. And because he did that, God said, ask me anything. If God was to say to you, every one of you right now, ask me anything, what would you ask for? God is saying, ask me anything. Can he trust you to say, ask me anything? anything? Can you believe God to say, ask me anything? For some of you, it may be, God, I just need to be healed. I'm sick. I need healing. Some of you, you believe in God, give me a miracle of transformation. Whatever it is, it is not too big for God. It is not too big for God. It is not too much for God to do. If you will look to God, he will do what will exceed your expectation. Yes, Laura, may God exceed your expectation. Second Chronicle chapter 2 verse 7. He's a miracle walking God. Hallelujah. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha and Omega. Jesus is a miracle walking God. Remember the former things, the things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, there is none like me. This is Isaiah 46, verse 9. 
God is telling each and every one of us, remember the former things. There's a scripture where it says, don't remember. This scripture says, remember. So I'm here to remind you. I remind you of the things of old. This scripture says, for I am God. There is no other. I am God. There is none like me. God is saying, remember the things I've done for you in the past. If I did it then, if I healed you then, if I provided then, if I made a way then, I'm still the same God. Even in the Bible time, all that I did, I'm still the same God. God says, I'm God that cannot change. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Jehovah Nisi, unchangeable, unchangeable God. Jehovah Jireh, unchangeable, unchangeable God. I redeem unchangeable, unchangeable God. I decree and declare the God who is able, the one who made heaven and earth, he will change your story. He will bring healing. Laura, you believe in for grandma to be healed. She shall be healed. We come in agreement in the mighty name of Jesus. Maria, God that is unchangeable, he will change your story. Me sharing God is able. He will do what only he is able. He says, I am God in the name of Jesus. I want you to take a look at Isaiah 14, 27. The Lord of heaven's army has spoken. Who can change his plans? When his hands is raised, who can stop him? I want you to pray. Father God, you are the God of heaven's army. The word heaven's army means the one who leads the battle in heaven. The one who leads armies, uh, heaven's armies. So if you are facing the battle today, the best way to pray and who to call upon, the different names that God has is for different situations. You call on the God of hosts, the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of heaven's army. That means that title, that title of God, that aspect of him is the one that fights. The God who fights. The one that David called upon, that's the God that fights battles. So as you call upon him, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of, our, of heaven's army, he is the one to fight for us. If you are in a battle today, I pray the Lord of heaven's army, he will arise, he will defend you, and he will fight for you. He will bring you out of every battle that you're facing in the name of Jesus. That battle will not consume you, but you will come out of that battle a warrior, a fighter, an overcomer, a victor. You will overcome in the name of Jesus. Every battle you are facing right now, just like that storm, could not drown Jesus it could not drown the disciples. You carry the Most High God. Just as no power is able to bring an end to Jesus, no power is able to bring an end to your story. You have just started. And God is bringing you out and taking you to a new place. God is fighting your battle in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord. Ask him and he will do great things in your life. Ask him and he will give you the victory. Ask him and he will help you overcome. Trust the Lord and you will not fail. Trust the Lord and you will not fall in the name of Jesus. Last night I was sleeping and this scripture, the Holy Spirit just put that scripture right in my face. And I looked it up because I'm trying to remember what scripture is that. It's in Matthew 11. So as I was preparing today, I thought that's ideal for you too. Matthew, Matthew. The book of Matthew, hallelujah, I want to share with you. It says, all power, all power is given. All power. So I wanted to share with you. I wanted to see to make sure that I did put it on, 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 my, um, on my lesson today. But it was in Matthew, in the book of Matthew. I'm trying to see where I put that. But I'm going to keep on looking. Matthew 28, 18. It says, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. So by the enemy, even though... The enemy is coming against you. God is telling you and I, all power belong to me. So don't fear. All power belong to me. So don't be wary. 
All power is in my hand. So I've got you. I've got you. No matter where you are, I've got you. I've got you. I understand your pain more than anybody does. I understand when you're going to come out. I understand what I'm going to use this pain to do in your life. And you may think, God, is taking a few years. God is taking several years. How long, Lord? How long? And God is saying, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. This is not going to kill you. It's going to change you. It's not going to destroy you. It's going to make you strong. It's going to build you up. Do you know? Because a lot of us, we, we say, God, I want a great ministry. When is the ministry going to start? I know you call me. I want a business. I know I'm an entrepreneur. I can feel it from when I was little. But when? And it reminds me of when Jesus, when he was 12 years old, and he went to, to the temple. And his mother, when they were going back home to Galilee, his mother, his parents, after three days, realized he wasn't following the group that went to celebrate. And so they went back to go look for him. I believe it's in Bethlehem. So when they went back to go look for him, they found him in the temple. He was talking. He was asking questions and answering questions in an amazing way. So when his mother got there, his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? He said, did you not know I will be about my father's business? After then, we didn't hear about Jesus any longer. For 30 years, we didn't hear about him. And the Bible said he grew. He grew. Grew how? Behind the scene. Grew when? Many years behind the scene. So by the time he came out, he took off. He took off. He started with miracle, with the wedding at Canaan. He wasn't even quite ready then, but his mother and his compassion made him to do it because they were out of wine. So he started with great miracles that we are still talking about today because about 30 years, he was behind the scene growing. There's not a single miracle recorded between when he was 12 years old and when he was 30 years old. So don't think all this time that nothing has happened, but it seems like it's happening for other people. And you know you're ready. You know you're equipped. You know God has called you. You know he's put something in you. You know the business is in you. You know you, the idea, you have it, but nothing is happening. God says, I'm preparing you, I'm growing you, I'm developing you so that when you come out, you will not fall. When you come out, you will not fail. When you come out, the enemy cannot touch you. Even when I lead you into the wilderness for temptation, you will overcome. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. May God do something that is exceedingly abundantly above all you've ever thought of. Above all you've ever think and you qualify for in the mighty name of Jesus. So Jesus did this in that three years. He did what nobody has ever done that have lived even a hundred years. So I want to encourage you. That because God wants to exceed your expectation, that's why there's delay. That's why you haven't moved forward yet. That's why there's hindrances and obstacles and attack here and there. But I want to encourage you, don't be overwhelmed. Don't be discouraged. God is walking. He's walking behind the scene. And when he brings you out, when God brings you out, it's going to be sudden. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be nationally. It's going to be great. People will see God through you, through his power, walking through you. You will have the wisdom that you need. You will receive.